last week when I came on, I didn't have a lot of strength. I didn't have my, my lungs were messed up. And I did not announce what I had and what was causing my lungs to do this because I have a right to my privacy. I don't know what it is. It is something about those of us who have been called to the public that the public directly and indirectly puts a demand on what they think they should get in the name of us being some type of entertainer without giving us a chance to be interviewed about what our purpose is or paying attention to what our true purpose is. They create who they want us to be in their minds and they lead their own lives with who they believe we are to them and they move around. I was so offended as a woman and as a woman of integrity because my family was offended. They were hurt because they got word. People who would never want to ever believe based on how they feel about me, that I was walking around with a deadly disease. COVID is nothing to hide. It is now up to, th they're saying now by February, 381,000 people will have it. Right now it's 212,000. But they're saying 318 or 380,000 people by February will have contracted the COVID-19. It has changed our world, not just the United States. Oh, God, hold me together. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I didn't talk about the details because I wanted to have a show where I could try to speak in English because I, to keep from speaking in tongues because of my experience with God. First of all, my sister Karen took the first bullet of COVID in our family some months ago. Thank you, Jesus. Thousands were already dead. So to get a call from your sister who you love, who you're best friends with, who you're close to, who changed your diapers, who's been your biggest supporter and cheerleader since you got started, even before the world knew who Kim Burrell was. Karen was and is my co-laborer in the gospel. My mama's first daughter traveled with me and called me. The Holy Ghost told me to FaceTime her. I didn't even know she had her, her phone. You know, when you go to the hospital, they take you on the COVID floor and you can't see your family. So that hurt because I'm a family person. All who really truly know me know I'm a family person. I don't play when it comes to the ones I love, meaning I will give my all to protect them and do what I got to do, no matter the amount of money, cost or time. That's who I am. And because people don't really truly know me and they judge me according to what they want me to be for them based on my gift, things get misconstrued. My feelings were hurt. God, overall, God healed my sister. In six days, she went into a hospital while others were dying around her. Glory to Jesus. She's writing a book and she's putting her own story in it. And the name of her book is called My Life's a Book. Things have greater meaning than what some of us sometimes make it to be. So it bothered me that my family said, why are we hearing? And it's all over the world and people are saying that Mr. Jeremy Reed is telling the world that you had COVID, Mr. Reed. And I said, what are y'all talking about? Why is that being told? When I did not say that, I said I had a problem with my lungs. I wasn't hiding it. How do you tell people that love you, have been loving you, and who support you, who want nothing but the best for you, I was walking around with it. It's what I didn't choose to tell people. I didn't want them to be hurt. It was my preference to come back. I'm healed because I'm not the type of person to deliver bad news and you're wearing it. And people started calling me, what's going on? What's That's what I didn't want to bring alarm to. Wasn't hiding it. I didn't choose to reveal it because that's my choice. It's my choice, my story. 
I felt so offended that somebody would take what I did not say, create it, conclude as if I, I was not trying to be integral. I owe no one but the Bible says, but to love them. So I didn't get mad. I started to pray and I said, God, you saved my soul and you saved my life more than once. I've been on thousands of planes throughout my life. You saved my life. Could have been me, should have been me. Why not me on planes that could have crashed and anything else, anything else that could have taken my life. So I contracted COVID and it's crazy because I had Travis and Earl booked to be on my show before I got the news that Mr. Reed had revealed this or exposed this and said to people it must have been that. And I just said, I don't understand. I don't know this man. He doesn't know me. Y'all are bringing this person up to me about things that he says about me. I don't follow that kind of energy because I don't know how people can be comfortable with slander. And if slander is your occupation, hurt must have put you there. And I can't retaliate. It's not in my salvation to retaliate or be mad. Because when they pulled it up to let me see, because I'm like, y'all, what is, what really? Nobody has, nobody has taken my life and done that as serious as COVID is, as serious as it is for my family. I got family out of state who did not need to hear it. It was so intrusive for someone to do this. And I'm human. So I got upset. Can I tell y'all? It, it, I got upset and I had to really pray because a lot of people say, oh, Kim going to go off because I have a huge personality. Like you saw while I was talking to whoever really knows me knows my personality and whoever knows me in the spirit can truly know who I am. Other people, I don't know what to tell you, but the Lord let me read my dear friend who is amazing in the gospel of Jesus Christ. He did a post and I happened to read it because I was reading the scripture as I do. And I happened to read it and I'm looking for it because it helped me. It helped me not get mad. It helped me make it helped to make me want to understand what would make him want to even do that without considering the other variables. Because he's a person. And I refuse to judge. I refuse to get mad. I refuse to, for what? There's no retaliation. You can't retaliate with something that needs a better help. I, that's how I feel. And I said, well, maybe he needs some information. It's not for him. It's for those who may have been misled. And I don't understand why people chase stuff like that. I, I don't understand why it would be important for a person who doesn't know me to deliver information to anyone except for it, it, because it did not bring peace. That's why I know it was not of God to be delivered that way. And so um, let me go to this because I want to share with you what helped me and maybe it'll help somebody else because the world is so wrapped around scandal and creating scandal. And I don't think that when you are in a position to create scandal or follow it even or chase it or want to know we're not in the business of creating scandal for each other as Christians or as people who love. I thought that we should be in the business of correcting what we think. If you see your brother in a, in a fault, cover him first, not notify everybody that, they, that there's a problem with it. And so, or anything like that. So father, I don't know. I can't get to it, but I want to read this. I want to read, I want to read this to you all because it changed how I felt. There it is. Thank you, dear God. It changed how it made me feel. I felt violated. I felt lied on. I felt intruded upon. I felt disrespected as a woman. I felt disregarded because it's my life and I, and I know how to tell my life and no one, 
No one puts a demand on what I say or do, but God. And that's for all of us. No one should want to demand for, for your business except for God who already knows it. So First Samuel 24 and 12, may the Lord judge between us. Here's what helped me. Perhaps the Lord will punish you for what you're trying to do to me, but I will never harm you. Y'all know my flesh didn't want that, but that's what. I want to be with God forever. So I have to work hard. And Pastor Ramsey helped my soul. He said, there is a right way. This is, he posted this, not about anything. It happened to be on his page, unaware of how I was feeling because I hadn't shared it with anyone. So I'm sitting alone and I see this. There is a right way to handle being wronged and a wrong way. I've seen people waste years and even decades of life trying to even a score or make someone pay for doing them wrong. In most cases, it was a waste of time. In other cases, although they got their revenge, it cost them valuable time. It consumed their best years. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord, Romans 12 and 9. Here's another nugget, Pastor Harry Ramsey, in that same thread. Seeking revenge is pride, and it never makes us whole. Hurting someone for hurting you doesn't heal you. When we humble ourselves and say, may the Lord judge between us, we are giving God permission to be who he said he would be to us. If they don't repent, here is the word of the Lord. To me belong a vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slip in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them will make haste. That's Deuteronomy 32, 35. Last nugget, don't get your heart all messed up. And your hands dirty trying to get people back. Keep your heart pure and your hands clean. I want to revisit the Deuteronomy piece. To me belong vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slip into time for the day of their calamity is at hand. It doesn't give me pleasure to read that that is what happens to people who walk in the direction of that type of result. I don't want anything to happen to Mr. Reed that is wrong because I'm a Christian. And I'm a loving woman and I'm not running from him. I'd rather run to him. If his heart, or his person or his relationship with God is not set up to be sensitive to people's lives, it has got to be. I figure maybe I'm wrong because he has been hurt. I want to say to Mr. Reed, I'm sorry for whoever and whatever could have possibly hurt you to put you in a place of comfort of hurting people. I apologize for them because when they let me see who you were, I have to admit this. And I saw you talking, I said, that's not him. That's not his true personality. This man has talent to not do what he's doing. There's a call on his life not to do this. And I asked myself, why did he choose? Why does he choose to do this? This is not even him. And I imagined if you, in fact, were doing what I believe God has given you a gift to expose and reveal, you would be much more powerful revealing God's word and healing lives and not hurting. Them. That's not Christian. That's not a good heart. And if you are a father, you wouldn't want that to happen to your children or to you or your mother or your aunt or anybody in your family. I want to share Proverbs 6 and 16. The Bible says in Proverbs 6, 16, these six things, and I'm going there, does the Lord hate? Yea, seven are an abomination. The first one, he says, is a proud look. And the one that I want to get to that is in there says feet that are quick to run to mischief. God hates that. People who follow that type of message, your feet are quickly running to mischief if you're expecting slander 
are exposing some type of slander, a downfall of somebody's character at the hands of Mr. Reed or anybody else who may do it. The Bible says God hates it. Excuse me, y'all. And my heart is broken because I know we can do better as people, all of us could stand to do better. But we can't be understood to be able to do better if we're too busy chasing the wrong that we do. Mr. Reed, I would never try to find the wrong that you do. That's not my interest as a person. God has given me a life to lead and I work hard at it. And one of the ways I do it is by building people. And that's why I even started doing Kimberell Live because I enjoy building people. I want to invite you to do that, to build people if that's not what you do. And have an encounter with God that will help you to reveal. These tears are not from me being hurt that he revealed it. I'm, I'm, I've been an open book. I just choose to say what I think people need to know. It's my privilege and my choice. So. I don't know why Mr. Reed would want to know or even have interest in exposing to the, to the public that his idea, maybe he cared, maybe he, maybe he cares about me, that he didn't want that to be, because I know he has a heart and COVID is too serious in killing people. Um, but I'm proud to say it didn't kill me. It couldn't. I don't say it with pride. Too many people have been lost because of the hand of the Lord. That is over me and that is on my life. I couldn't die. Y'all, I asked God one night to let me because it was too much. He wouldn't let me. <laughs> he raised me up and he healed me about seven or eight days ago my oxygen level was at eight to seven Kim keep it together my oxygen was at eight, 87 my family and friends took me well one Katrina took me she said your oxygen is too low baby we got to figure something out. So we went by emergency, one of the places and no one was there because that's how I live my life. I don't want to hurt anybody and I choose to be private with my life. When in there, the doctor saw me and within five minutes, he says, your oxygen is too low. I cannot help you here. You need to be intubated. He takes out whatever paper that was, and the doctor began to write order, I guess, to send me. He says, what hospital are you going to so that we can send this over to let them know you need to be intubated? Now, everybody can't say this, and everybody will not say this, and others have not responded this way. Uh, excuse me, y'all. I'm trying to hold it in, but I can't. I looked up at Katrina. I said, roll me out of here because I couldn't walk. I didn't have the lung capacity. I said, Katrina, roll me out of here. I said, thank you, sir. I said, roll me out of here. We got to figure this out. We got in that car. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Glory to Jesus. We got in that car. She said, we got to figure something out, sis. The Holy Spirit spoke to her. Called my private doctor. She said, I need an order for oxygen now. God showed us favor. We were within miles of the medical place that had what I needed. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I want to run. Hooked up to the oxygen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Whew. God touched me and brought my lungs, my oxygen from 87 to 97 within 48 hours. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
what the doctor thought an intubation needed to do. Huh? Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit breathed into my lungs. That's why I need y'all to understand that this is not a story to expose. It's a testimony. I'm negative. <laughs> I'm negative. I went and got retested. I'm negative. I couldn't die. Because God had need for me to tell somebody here tonight, y'all quit chasing the energy that makes you mad and upsets you. Mr. Reed, please search your heart, sir. Search your heart. Search your heart. This ain't about blogging. Jesus is coming. I'm aware. You are aware. We all are aware. Look at the world. People are dying funerals every week. I came off of Facebook for a month because I didn't want to hear another bishop. Another judgment has begun at the house of God first. And that's why we got to put our foot to the grind and quit getting offended. Quit, quit worrying about what people say and are trying to expose because the Bible has it covered in Deuteronomy that their foot's going to slip in a minute. I don't want that to happen to you, Mr. Reed. Personally, I don't because your life deserves a much better outcome than the word finding you in that place for it to pass judgment on you. So I'm asking you to reconsider your heart and how you go about doing this because it hurts people and it doesn't bring them together. And that's my spill on that. I want those who are watching me, I want to dedicate this to Mr. Reed and to those um, who are struggling with revenge and wanting to get back at people. Remember only what you do for Christ will last. Remember only what you do for Christ will last. Only what we do for him. Ooh, that's what's going to be counted in the very end. Only what we do for Christ will last. Glory to God. Amen. I want to share. Not only am I COVID free. I am envy free. I'm filled with forgiveness and understanding. I had an encounter with God. You don't get that close to death and not. Don't let anybody position you to judge anybody. Everybody listening to me. Don't let anybody put you in a position to judge anybody. Pay attention to your life. Life happens quickly. COVID is aggressive. For all we know between now, those who are watching me and February, somebody watching could get it. Please build your system. If you have underlying things, I'm telling you from the experience, thank God I was healthy as I was. Because the enemy told me, that's why I brought my grandfather up in the story, told me when you had double pneumonia, your prayer team, they're not here. Your mother's gone to be with God. Your grandfather's gone to be with God. Your other pastor, he's older now. He can't get to you what you do. Ooh. I had a little strength in my lungs. I said, but the God that they came to me with is here. And the devil had to loose me. He had to get up. The God that has ever brought any of us out, he's available to all of us. I want to tell all of y'all, take, take advantage of the power and the love and the mercy of God. COVID does not announce itself. Before you know it, COVID has entered and it is, a, it is aggressive. For the record, all my friends, as you saw tonight, we have conversation. Everybody is well. I thank God I did not affect anybody. That's where my heart is. I was so worried that I was going to affect anyone. And the Lord healed me. And my environment is healed. And I'm thankful to the Lord. And I pray that if anybody came my way, that God healed them as quickly as he healed me. And I want to know, I want to let anybody know who thinks they could have affected me or infected me when I was there. I'm here. I survived it. God is good. Let's be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Let's love each other. I want to say to my family, to Chris and Eric, I love you. Thank you for praying for me. Thanks for our close relationship down through the years. I follow uh, my brother, Chris. We're so close. Chris Andrews. I follow him closely. Um, and uh, he put up a video. And that's what I'm going to close with tonight. Okay, everybody, I shared this video. Uh, I'm sharing this video on my platform. Everybody else has shared it. About Camper Rail, even Larry Reed has came out. It was actually Larry Reed, not Jeremy Reed. 
And I just decided to share it today because I see uh, CTV had made a video. Now, Conscious TV is a witch. Just want all you people to know that. He's also openly gay. Uh, I'm saying that Jive has shared this too. And I'm saying this because these queens out here are still upset at Kim Burrell because of what she had got on her platform and said some few years ago when she called out the gays. In a church, in a New Year's Eve service, she was talking to her congregation. She wasn't talking to nobody else but the people in the congregation. When people are on a platform pre preaching a church, they only preach to the members that's in attendance at their church. Somebody had recorded what Kim Burrell was saying when she said that if you're a man and you got your thing shaking in another man's face, you are perverted. And if you're a woman and you shaking your titties in another woman's face, you are perverted. And then she mentioned about Eddie Long. And a whole lot of people came after Kim Burrell because of that. Because, um, you know, Eddie Long was years ago. It came out that Eddie Long had had some relationships with some young boys that was of age, though. Because in Atlanta, Georgia, the age of consent is 17. So they was above 17. And what happened is, is that they were given rides and, every, you know, uh, gifts. Uh, they was given a ride, a car. Uh, they was giving money. They was flying to um, Switzerland or New Zealand or one, one of those countries. You know, they was going on trips and all of that stuff. And when the money dried up for them, when he stopped giving them these gifts and all of that, then they came out on Eddie Long. And that put Eddie Long to shame. So when Kim Burrell got on her platform and said, wouldn't nobody be thinking that you had AIDS, had th that story came out about those boys, everybody in the church world went buck wild. People who was gay, this I mean, and people that was in the church world was exposed. Okay. Now, the only person who handled the situation properly and correctly was Juanita Biden when she came out with her sermon with, at Three With Me. And she talked about the situation because somebody asked her, I guess one of her spiritual daughters or whatever. And she properly addressed the situation. And said Kim Burrell will be okay. She's not going to lose her career. She's too annoying to, for her career to be gone. To... But now let's talk about these church queens. Okay. When that story broke, they called Kim Burrell all types of names. Where they talked about her like a dog. There was rumors about her husband and everything. I know Andrew Carwell had his say so because she mentioned him, you know, being uh, having a spirit of of, of uh, lunatic or dumb or something like that. Not being able to speak and being on a Jimmy, uh, what was that, Jimmy Kimmel show. And making a mockery of the church. I think anybody who sit up there and be speaking in tongues just like somebody else and just doing it because somebody told that they ain't safe unless they do it is making a mockery out of the church. I, I, it's just me. But anyway... With these church queens, and I know they don't get mad and pissed off and people, and I don't care if nobody don't watch. I don't care if you talk about me like a dog. You've been doing that, so what? But how be ever? How in the world? And this go, this don't go for jive. Okay, I know he had to say so about Kimberell because he was mad about the situation because he's openly gay. <laughs> but that that stuff is over with now. People shouldn't be holding no grudge just because somebody came out here wrong. I believe in equal rights and all of this stuff. I have people who gays in my, in my family, but I also grew up in a church, just like all these other queens, who have been telling us for years that homosexuality was a sin. So that's how the way people are taught, and they're teaching it to their kids, and they teach it to their congregation and everything else. 
what we need to do is just encourage people to study the word of God. Now, I don't know if Larry Reed have uh, had Conscious TV to make a video concerning this because Conscious TV is a witch. And just like I was saying this about Jay Monet and Alicia Keys and Pharrell, those people are not nowhere associated with the church. That message that she preached on New Year's Eve was not about them. It, it had nothing to do with them. And what she has said concerning Larry Reed, it wasn't nothing bad that she said about the COVID-19. It wasn't none of his business. She didn't expose, she didn't tell nobody that she had it because she didn't want her family to worry. And that was her business. So I don't think she was being rude when she addressed Larry Reed. And I know that she had used the scriptures about people's, so, but just think about it. We all up here blogging. And there are some things that we might say that might hurt people's reputation. And people's reputation has been damaged in the past. People have lawsuits, Larry Reed. If you are Larry Reed is in court right now for for what he had put out there concerning E. Dewey Smith Church. And a member of his church about somebody being raped and drugged and raped. Uh about E. Dewey Smith having a love child. So he got, and he also, he almost had another lawsuit that was dismissed. So, I don't know if you use a conscious TV because you have used him to be a mouthpiece with what was going on with E. Dewey Smith. And now he's out here again. And I don't know what it is with you and these witches. Because you got Ebert out Jordan who got a degree in astrology. What in the hell, I mean, Lord forgive me. What in the world do astrology have to do with the Bible? Just because those three, it didn't, the Bible never even said how many wise men was. It just said how many gifts they gave to Jesus. Though I'm talking about the men who seen Jesus. Who study the stars. And if you notice that every king in the Bible. If you look at the Old Testament. All these pack of kings had astrologers. They had people who studied the stars. They had people who did magic and, and all of that stuff. They had the Cadian. The, you know, in the time. Uh, if that's what they was called. And they performed magic and all of that stuff. They did it in Egypt. Pharaoh had his musicians. And Moses thrown, thrown down his rod. His mu musicians th threw down their rod. And the, the rod turned into a snake. And Moses' rod that turned into a snake ate their rods. So they always had these astrologers. These people who study stars. These people who were, you know, dibbling and dabbling in familiar spirits and divination and sorceries and all that. They had those. So, and I know people might say, well, God created the heaven and earth, and I had tore down what Larry Reed, what even our Jordan and that other guy, Pastor uh, uh, Shamari, or, Shamari or whatever his name was, had said. About, oh, uh, well, people that have no way to know about God until the 1500 when the Bible came, when print came into operation, all that stuff. Wait a minute, do your research. The scribes and Pharisees had the Old Testament. They was written on some type of clay ta tablet or something like that. They took those clay tablets and they started translating and all of that before, you know, those something happened before those clay tablets was destroyed or something like that. So they had the, the Bible. They had the Old Testament. They studied from something Jesus read from and let you know that Jesus opened up the scriptures, read Isaiah. So 
So I let people on my platform know, don't listen to that mess. Don't listen to that mess. But anyway, uh, Conscious TV has called this woman all types of names. For what? But when somebody call you conscious all types of names, you pissed off. You sit up there conscious and you're dabbling and dabbling in witchcraft, divination, playing with tarot cards. It's okay to put out a story about people in the church and everything else, but you don't have to be calling nobody no types of names or doing no dirty work for no Larry Reed. And some of these people's reputation has been damaged by the stuff that was put out there on them. Like that girl who had kissed her father and everything. We made a big deal about that and was trying to make it seem like, the, you know, it made it seem like the father-in-law was going out with the daughter-in-law. And I know I had my stories out there about Juanita Bynum, but I was woman enough to send those stories to Juanita Bynum. I uh, showed up there. I contacted with uh, all my platforms, even uh, Instagram and Twitter. And sat up there. I sat up there. I even tagged her in the videos. I sat up there and sent her the videos of what I was putting out there. And all she could say is some of my name is being slandered all over the internet. And I don't even know what I did. But y'all guys sit up here. Y'all making all these videos, making videos about this. And I know Larry Reed wants to respond. He did. But E. Bernard Jordan did tell you, which I agree with, to pray for her. Raise up some money for her. And send it to her. Because of this pandemic, she probably wasn't able to travel. So, you know, just keep her in prayer and raise up some money. Now, I'll say a conscious TV make a video and call this woman all types of names and stuff like that. This woman did not say that she had COVID-19 until this video. She did not want that to be known because she hadn't told her family. I wouldn't want everybody to know that I had COVID-19 unless I'm some government official. Unless I'm somebody that's around a whole lot of people. The only people who I would want to know was people at my job. You know, a few family members. That's it. Now... And I'm happy that it was COVID-19 because really I noticed that somebody made mention of the HIPAA law and all of that stuff. But with COVID-19, they have an app to where if somebody already had it, that if they put it in that app that they had it, that you get alerted that you are around somebody who has it or, or that you have been exposed. With HIV, is totally different because, see, I worked as a CNA. And nobody, unless somebody tells you or choose to tell you that they're HIV, because HIV is a blood pathogen disease. COVID-19 is airborne. Big difference. It's deadly. It's killing people. I know HIV is too over time, but they people are living longer with HIV. And the only way you could con contract HIV is if you have sex with somebody, have a blood transfusion, using an infective needle, you know, something like that. So, really, they are really strict on that. And I think that was basically thrown into law to protect the privacy of people who had HIV because they was being discriminated against. When I worked as a CNA 20 years ago, we were not allowed to know which patient had AIDS or HIV. COVID-19 is different. They're going to tell you, hey, you got to put that mask on. They got that even though nobody is allowed to know the patient's 
health, about the patient health or anything like that. You know, if you work in a, in a nursing home or a hospital, they got to let you know that that patient, before you go in that room, that they have, you know, they have COVID-19 or you need to cover up. You need to make sure you have your mask on. But as far as AIDS and HIV, they're not tell you nothing. Yeah, they're not going to tell you anything about that. But they won't disclose nobody health information beyond the hospital. And the reason why I think that they might tell people more so about COVID-19, again, because it's airborne and it's deadly. HIV and AIDS and um, hepatitis, those are all blood-borne diseases. So it's a big difference there. But anyway, when you are not for sure about what somebody is saying, sometimes it's best not to say anything. Even if you use the word allegedly. Hey, Kim Burrell got on a platform and said she was having trouble with her lungs. Let's just keep her in prayer. And then when she come out and tell her story, then you can say, okay, she had COVID-19. You know, but I know that Larry didn't mean no harm when he reported it the first time. But when he came and responded, then it was like throwing darts. And knives and shots and all that stuff. And of course, the blogger who been after him had got on his platform and used that very same story to go after him. He really didn't have no content. That was his content. <laughs> to go after somebody. But... Anyway, I'll just tell you, I have no problem with Kim Burrell. I love her music. I don't even think she said really anything bad. The only thing she said bad back in that New Year's Eve search was that she mentioned names. That was it. She should have just said, hey, just preach service. Hey, you know, this is what I agree with. You can take it as whatever. I'm preaching to you guys. That's in his, that's in his church. That this is what I believe that that you are perverted if you are if you are a man sleep with another man and a a woman sleep with another woman and let it be that if people get offended let them get offended I know that Ella the generous I think her show got canceled I believe her show got canceled I don't know her she was in trouble uh, it had something to do with um with discrimination or something, not on her part, but maybe on the part of people who worked with her. But everybody's out there talking about, you gotta love everybody, you gotta love, and we got all these people that's out in the street that don't have no food, that don't have no place to go, that get overlooked. We have all these folks in the church, we got, four, I just talked about 400, 545 kids that's without a parent that don't have their parents that got separated from their parents since 2017 some of them haven't seen their parents since 2017 but that story don't get sweeped up under the rug because People is still the you know we got the story about the pandemic being out there the election, which is a big thing, um, and people don't get distracted and everything else by the stuff that's going on around them that they only mention it in the in the news is you know they're not gonna mention it that much anymore they're not gonna call it out every day or nothing like that. But I'll let you know it's out there and these kids is. You know, we don't know what's going on with these kids. Yeah, I haven't seen this story on CNN. I haven't seen it on CNN. It might have been, but I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it on Fox. 
I haven't seen on MSNBC. Uh, and I'm talking, you know, it, it did show up on the local channel, ABC, NBC, and all of that stuff for one day, but that's it. And while we're facing these pandemics, who who's taking care of these kids? What's going on with these kids? Are they being protected? They using foil for covers. So I don't have nothing against the gay community. I don't. I will be doing my research more into it. But I could go by what the Bible says. The Bible says detestable is an abomination. That's what Paul was telling the Romans. I'm going to see what the Lord God what he has to say about it, what the Lord has to say about it. But Paul was right to this church to let them know not to do these practices, not to do those. And so I have no problem with Kim Burrell, but, you know, I see that Larry Reed, again, I'm not saying that he sent conscious to make that video, but in the past he has sent conscious to be a mouthpiece for him. And I just think that the name calls was very unnecessary because Kim Burrell did not call nobody no names. She just said, I'll pray for you. I could be upset about, but I won't. Uh, she did talk about that scripture about your feet will be as, you know, you'll be a slippery place or something like that. Um, but people reputations have been damaged. There has been stuff that's been put out there. And Larry Reed do have some lawsuits for putting some things out there about people like with the E. Dewey Smith. Uh, with the woman being um, drugged and raped. There's a lawsuit out there uh, with this love child. And I know that pastors are being called out and everything. But none of us is perfect. And I know that, you know, people have got love childs out there, you know. You know, I was a love child, you know, and I, you know, but I was raised by two parents. I was raised, I was adopted into a family with two parents that raised me. So, I, I don't know what these kids are going with. I you know, what they're going through. Um, you know, it is what it is because my situation about all of that, you know, once I became an adult, that's where my, that's where it seemed like the folks who raised me was going crazy. Um, so I don't know anything about people growing up without their father being in their life. I mean, I went to school with a lot of people who didn't have their parents in their life. Um, but we see this in the church, and it shouldn't be. So I know that these people have been exposed and everything, and homosexual relationships have been exposed even with the people. But you have to remember, Eddie Long was a person who, who preached against homosexuality too, up until the time he got busted out, when those boys ratted on him. And even though Caporell said what she said, she did not necessarily say that Eddie Long had AIDS. She said, wouldn't nobody think that you were died of AIDS had those boys came out? In other words, she was saying that some people was thinking that he might have had AIDS. And that's what she was saying. But I know people like Yolanda Adams came out. It says something, but like I said, the only person who really properly handled handled it was Juanita Bynum when she came on her platform at at the three with me and did her message, and she said, "You know what, Kim Burrell's not gonna lose her career. She's too anointed to lose her career, but speak what you know." So anyway. With this COVID-19 now, Kim Burrell wasn't being rude to Mr. Larry Reed, even though she got his name wrong. She called him Jeremy Reed. 
But what she was saying is this. It was nobody's business to know that I had COVID-19. I didn't want to reveal that. But you took something and you put it out there anyway. And I'm not angry with you, even though I never told my family, but my family heard you say it and tell about a whole lot of people. And now I see that Conscious TV has made a video. And he called this ladies all types of names. And it's like, wait a minute, dude, whoa, oh, wait a minute. You sit up here teaching people about magic and, and tarot cards and all this other stuff. And doing all types of sorcery. And you ain't never used none of that to make Larry Reed's lawsuits go away. You sit up here, every time we see you, you got the one eye covered because we already know what you are. And you need to tell people what that what I cover stands for, too. And I remember when I went on Conscious TV Patreon, I had to so there dismember myself from that. I was like, ain't no way in the world following no witch. And I started sounding like Brian Kyron when he was lying, even though I was telling the truth. Say, hey, I'm not following no witches. I don't follow witches. And really, they call a woman a witch, so that must be a warlock. But anyway, I don't see what else Kim Burrell has done wrong. Y'all set up here. She believes what she believes, but the, the, they've been preaching that, that homosexuality was a sin for years. For years in the church. Are you all going after every church that preach against homosexuality? Why y'all ain't going after Earl Carter? He talk about he talks against the gays all the time. And I don't see y'all sit up here calling him a bunch of names. He gets on his platform or YouTube almost every day and talk about the gay people's like a dog. You've been talking about Bishop Blake, who is now retiring. And I don't know if that stuff is true or not. But he has been calling out Bishop Blake and all those other cogent pastors. He have called out King Jive. He called out Will McCray. And we already know that Will McCray be preaching against homosexuality. But he looks... He still here, he got the long fingernails and the long hair. And he's sitting up there. I'm like, okay, you preaching against it, but you live in it. What's up? You preaching against it, but you got the tendencies. <laughs> but I know Will McCray, he's for Kim Burrell. He likes Kim Burrell. And then the old man just used that after Larry Reed. Say what he had to say. The old man just used that to attack Larry Reed because he didn't have no content. He didn't really have nothing to say. <laughs> but I got something to say. This lady, it's her privacy. If she had chose not to tell everybody that she didn't have COVID-19, so be it. Who was she hurting? Now, I can understand if she got caught being in bed with somebody after she'd been preaching and stuff and people brought that all out. But even if you did expose the fact that she had COVID-19, was the name calling necessary? Or was it necessary to have the, the your buddy come out here and be called the witch buddy? And why is it? I wonder why is Larry Reed good friends with Conscious TV and with these people that teach us astrology and tarot cards and all of that. So why, how, how are y'all comfortable with each other? <laughs> because I would say that's 
you know, I'm compromised. I mean, I could, I could understand if I'm working with somebody of a different belief, even if they're a witch or a Satanist or whatever else, and we work together. Okay, I could get along with them in the workplace. But I'm not going to be sitting there hanging all around them after we leave work. Because somebody's going to start pulling somebody. You know, I'm going to start doing what they do or they're going to start doing what I do. Just the same way. When you get a gay and a straight person together, either somebody don't pull somebody. You get a nut and a slut together, somebody's going to pull somebody. In other words, that's why the Bible said, hey, uh, that, you know, you should not have no fellowship with the It said light and darkness have no fellowship. You know, some of y'all don't want to be hanging around people that's poor, but you are hanging around people that's a witch. I don't get that. You don't want to hang around poor people because you don't want what they do to wear on you or to be pulled out by them, but you hang around witches. You'll hang around fornicators. Even the Bible says don't be unequally unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So anyway, let me just go. But anyway, I hear Kim Burrell. And there's nothing wrong with what she has said. She did get the name wrong. She called him Jeremy Reed instead of uh, Larry Reed. But when he first said allegedly, it sounded like she had COVID-19. I didn't think he said did anything either. But when he came back with that response and stuff, it was like, okay, dude, what's up? And then now I'm hearing... CTV so they call it all types of names and stuff like that if like if that was let me see a transcript or something I mean I gotta say you call them, let me see your transcript all types of names for what she did you know with your videos and having you all out there and talking about you like a dog but what what did Kim Perel say about you I mean how is it that a witch it's calling somebody all types of days for just no reason at all. I gotta go. Yeah, have a great day.